The banner has been raised. Oh well, I can check myself on stream. How do you know? The banner just looks black. All right, so trying to get the banner raised up so people can get a better view of it. And for those of you who are just tuning in, you are live and direct with Oaktown Pirate. We are here at. Oakland City Hall, where Occupy Oakland is announcing the J28 move-in day, and we're getting a better view of the banner here. Trying not to block City Hall here. Yeah, we can actually see the banner. Okay, so. And we are beginning. Okay, who's starting? I am. Okay, uh, is everybody ready? Do I just go? Yeah. Okay. My name is Leo Ritzbar, and I am a member of the Events Committee of Occupy Oakland, as well as the Labor Solidarity Committee of Occupy Oakland, and I have been asked to read this following statement. I am reading it on behalf of the Occupy Oakland Move-In Assembly. On January 28th, Occupy Oakland will take over a vacant building in the city of Oakland to establish a new home. The move-in action will begin with a two-day festival called the Oakland Rise Up Festival at the new building site, the location of which will remain a surprise until the day of the event. The Seas building will be converted into a social center and a meeting place for the movement as well as the people of Oakland. The building's takeover was approved by the Occupy Oakland General Assembly and signals a new direction for the Occupy movement, putting vacant buildings at the service of the community and not the banks. Despite a nationwide housing crisis and increasing homelessness, thousands of buildings lie vacant in Oakland and millions across this country. The Occupy Oakland Move-In Committee states, like millions of people in this country, Occupy Oakland has no home. On January 28th, Move-In Day, we're going to change that. We're going to occupy a large vacant building and convert it into a social center, so come join us for the initial occupation. There will be a festival all that weekend to celebrate our new home. During the Occupy Oakland camp, the movement provided food, shelter, medical services, and much more to anyone who asked for them. In fact, they didn't even have to. They could just show up. It was recently disclosed that crime in Oakland dropped 19% during the week that the camp was here at Oscar Grant Plaza. And further than that, the Oakland Police Chief Jordan was aware of this drop, as well as Gene Kwan. In a letter to Mayor Kwan, he stated, Not sure how you want to share this good news. It may be counter to our statement that the Occupied Movement is negatively impacting crime in Oakland. Nonetheless, the camp was forcibly evicted from Oscar Grant Franco Gawa Plaza on the grounds that it threatened the health and safety of citizens. Ironically, when the OPD evicted us, they threatened the health and safety of many more Oakland citizens with their quote-unquote less than lethal ammunition, of which put a, uh, a Iraq veteran in the hospital due to a tear gas canister that he was shot in the face with. 
The OPD is being investigated for its actions against Occupy Oakland. They also face possible federal receivership after over a decade of abusing Oakland residents. Occupy Oakland responded to this first eviction by calling for a general strike with over 3,000 people who retook this plaza and established the second camp. And we responded to the second coordinated West, to the second eviction with the coordinated West Coast Port Shutdown. Both events succeeded in shutting down the Oakland port due to tens of thousands of supporters showing up, sometimes even at 5.30 in the morning for the West Coast Port Shutdown. Since then, despite this public support, the Oakland Police Department, under Mayor Kwan's watch, has arrested dozens of Occupy Oakland people at Oscar Grant Plaza. Many were detained for days, though the charges were not pursued because they would never stand up in court. As a result of this persistent repression and harassment, the movement has been unable to continue to provide food and shelter, medical care, and other services here at Oscar Grant Plaza. The city, while claiming claiming it cannot afford to provide these services itself or its citizens and spent millions of taxpayer dollars on police action against Occupy while neglecting the needs of its citizens. The Movement Assembly has written a letter to Mayor Kwan which states, if you try to evict us again, we will make your lives more miserable than you will make ours. Our response may take one of the following forms, blockading the airport, Occupying City Hall indefinitely, shutting down the Oakland port, calling on Anonymous for solidarity action. We all know what happens with Anonymous. It will be in our mutual interest if you respect our occupation by recognizing our residency in eminent domain. We are sure that we all look forward to the needs of, people, of Oakland people finally being met. On January 28th, the day of the takeover, Occupiers will rally here at Oscar Grant Plaza at 12 p.m. noon at, four, at the corner of 14th and Broadway. March to the takeover destination and occupy. There will be a two-day festival at the Seas Building location that will include special events, special guests, music, workshops, speakers, and many, many more. The Move-In Building Committee will continue to solicit requests from residents of Oakland and the Bay Area who want to get involved and have suggestions for specific uses of the space, because it's up to all of us to create the kind of society that we want to live in. And this building will be a microcosm, if not a macrocosm, of that. So for more information, updates, and a schedule for the two-day Oakland Rise Up Festival, please visit OccupyOaklandMoveIn.org. Thank you. <laughs> that was Leo Ritzbar of the uh, events committee. And I'll be representing the Joaquin Brown Free School and Occupy Oakland Library. Since the first day of the Occupy Oakland encampment, Joaquin Brown Free School and Occupy Oakland Library have provided well over a thousand people with books, scenes, workshops, and children's story types. Past events included a Black Panther history panel free yoga, martial arts, and creative writing workshops, and anti-oppression training. The library provides free educational and recreational reading material through tent and mobile libraries, as well as a growing poetry anthology. New projects in the works focus on promoting literacy in Oakland, primarily by developing relationships with existing community groups. We are committed to creating innovative library and radical learning spaces that serve the greater Oakland community and complement our city's beloved public libraries and schools, which have faced deep budget cuts, service cuts, and reduced hours. By naming our preschool after Raheem Brown, a young African-American man who was killed by police near school grounds, we hope to highlight the ongoing trend of defunding social and educational services while increasing policing of Oakland youth and black and brown students. and I'm sharing a statement from the Occupy Oakland Medics Collective. Wow. Occupy Oakland Medics, Medics Collective is a non-hierarchical, consensus-based, autonomous group. Among us are herbalists, doctors, physician assistants, wilderness first responders, nurses, and EMTs. We come together as volunteers to provide first aid at demonstrations and to support the wellness of Occupy Oakland. 
from October to November, who treated hundreds of individuals at the Oxford Grant Plaza in Hampton. We continue to provide health support to the Occupy Oakland vigil. We provide free care to all and treat patients with respect and dignity. On October 25th, campers were tear gassed and shot with projectiles in the name of public health and safety. 24-year-old war veteran Scott Olson suffered a potentially life-threatening skull fracture from a tear gas canister deliberately shot at point-blank range. Despite providing for many basic needs and marginalized and underserved people in Oakland, we experience continuing harassment and assault by the city and police, often, again, on the pretext of public health and safety. It is evident that the real threat to public health and safety in Oakland comes from Mayor Kwan and her administration's decision to dispossess Occupy Oakland and stand in the way of community self-care. The routinely violent, racist, and destructive Oakland Police Department and community devastation caused by the greed of the corporate 1%. The city won't guarantee the 99% what we need for a healthy community, like housing, education, and basic health care, so we are claiming them for ourselves. In our new community center, Occupy Oakland Medics will continue to provide for the health and wellness of all occupiers and support the greater goal of Occupy Oakland. Otherwise, fuck you, Rowan. So when we call for medic, we have to know they're coming. My name is Tess, and I am speaking on behalf of Occupy Oakland's parents and allies of Oakland. When the encampment existed in Oscar Grant Plaza, families were an integral part of the community. The Children's Village was formed so that parents could feel connected to the movement, so that they could engage in general assemblies and working groups while their children made art or read books or played a game of pickup soccer. It also existed as a social center for people from all over Oakland, giving parents of young children a chance to interact and network with each other. We always had an abundance of food, clothes, diapers, toys, all donated by the good people of Oakland. We didn't anticipate how many families we would come to know and love that had no other shelter than the tents that they stayed in at the club. The camp offered too many families something that the system had not, a sense of home. Without the tent city, many families have had no other place to go but back on the street. Currently, children comprise 28% of the homeless population in Oakland. There are 16,000 homeless people in Alameda County, and half of them are families. It is a sad commentary on humanity that this system allows an abundance of usable shelter to sit empty and abandoned when there are so many people without homes. The Children's Village will march as a part of the move-in day on January 28th. We will have a teaching and solidarity picnic at a nearby park, and families can decide to join the building occupation should the city officials and OPD act safely and in fairness. While it is our hope that the police always consider the possible presence of children before taking violent action against protesters, we can no longer act in faith that this is so. Our event on this day will happen within walking distance of the building, but far enough away so as not to expose children to any possible violent resistance from the OPD. We hope that we are being unnecessarily cautious, that if police and city officials are present, they come in peace and ready to listen. This action is an opportunity for the city to begin to restore the trust of its citizens and repair some of the PR damage that has been done over the course of the Occupy Movement's short but amazing history. We hope for the sake of our comrades, our children, and ourselves that this is a day of enlightenment and evolution for the great city of Oakland. The whole world is indeed watching. Thank you. Statement from the Children's Village. My name is Jake Anderson. I'm on the media committee for Africa Open. And I'm also on the defense. Uh, I would, a lot of good things have already been said, so I don't want to repeat. But I would like to say that this overall movement is about the humanity. Of, 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 about humanity and food, shelter, and safety for all of us. We actually, this is uh, We've been fighting hard to continue to feed people and to uh, provide food and shelter for everybody. This is a continuous effort. This protest is a 24-hour protest. What that means is that it doesn't stop. We don't go, we go to sleep, we wake up to continue to support this movement. This uh, event that we're having, this is the Rise Up Festival, which I'll be uh, gladly hosting some of the events, will, uh, will comprise of a lot of Bay Area artists, a lot of uh, uh, poets, uh, hip-hop artists, also a lot of bands. 
we're going to uh, uh, rise up and we're going to celebrate with the people, showing everybody that we can uh, work in solidarity and continue to support this movement which provides basically the basic needs of all mankind. Our city government has continually been prosecuting us for doing uh, exercise of our basic human rights. We have a Bill of Rights and Constitution that protects our buildings and simple. And without these rights, without us fighting for them, we don't know, they no longer exist. We live in a system of corruption, and we're showing life to corruption by everyday action that we provide. This one action, by taking over this building, will continue will continue to show that we have the power, the people have the power, not the government, not the administrators, not any of these uh, police officers. We have the power to continue to support ourselves and not have to depend on the prosecution and the military industrial complex to continue to fight wars for no reason and the prison industrial complex to continue to incarcerate our young men and women. So I would like to say that I'm so happy to be here and I'm so happy to invite you all out come out on the 28th and 29th to celebrate with us. It's going to be an excellent time, and I'll be there hosting. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Lila, and I'm with the Occupy Oakland Kitchen. Um, when the camp was up here in the plaza, we were able to provide a safe space for people to eat. We fed hundreds of people a day. It directly remedied issues of hunger, uh, mental illness, uh, emotional neglect, and for help. Um, we, it, because it allowed people to feel good in their body and it inspired communion amongst each other. Um, since the camp has been deactivated and down, um, it's, been, it's been possible to provide a safe space for people to eat as we're constantly under attack and threat by the OCD and the city authorities. Um, we would love a community space that continues providing these social services so we can directly address the socioeconomic issues that, that Oakland faces and um, the wider community faces. Thank you. Now, we'll leave this in the kitchen committee. Hello, my name is uh, Sean Most, and I'm reading a statement that has been um, written by the Occupy Oakland Movement Day Building Assembly. Uh, and this is actually a letter to Mayor Jean Kwan, to the Oakland Police Department, and to the Oakland City Council. As you probably know, Occupy Oakland is planning the occupation of a building on January 28th that will serve as a social center, convergence center, headquarters, and free kitchen, and place of housing for Occupy Oakland. Like so many other people, Occupy Oakland is homeless while buildings remain vacant and unused. For Occupy, this is due in large part to yourself, having evicted us twice from public space that is rightfully ours. For others, it is because of the housing bubble, predatory lending, the perpetual crisis of capitalism, and far-reaching histories of imperialism and systemic violence. Our families, friends, and communities built the buildings to sit empty in post-industrial Oakland. Now these buildings outnumber the homeless and represent the theft of our collective labor as the class of the unproperty and dispossessed. Allowing this building to remain vacant while so many are in need is injurious theft and justice. Its extra legal occupancy is not. When Occupy Oakland was first evicted on October 25th, we organized a general strike on November 2nd with only a week to plan. November 2nd proved our strength and relevancy. Conservative estimates said 20,000 took the street, but for those of us who marched on the court, it could have been 100,000. November 2nd was an inspiration for the Occupy movement and a public condemnation of your violent repression. Eventually, we reoccupied off the Grand Plaza, only to suffer a second violent eviction on November 14th. At this time, there was a national crackdown on the Occupy movement, as evictions were happening in Boston, New York City, Atlanta, Portland, Oregon, and elsewhere. It was revealed that you, Gene Kwan, had been coordinating with federal agents how to best repress the sense. In response, Occupy Oakland was the impetus for a West Coast port shutdown in solidarity with Longview ILWU workers whose union is under attack by EGT. The action escalated to a national and then international action as more occupations signed on. In Oakland alone, the shutdown cost them $8.7 million in lost revenue and proved that when civic and economic institutions do not serve us, we can shut them down. Since the beginning of the Occupy movement, when you have exacted violent repression on the movement, the movement has proven its power. 
If you try to evict again, the Occupy Oakland, uh, Occupy Oakland will make your lives more miserable than you make ours. The Movement Assembly of Occupy Oakland has come to consensus that a response is time to take one or more of the following forms. Blockading the airport indefinitely, occupying City Hall indefinitely, shutting down the Oakland port, calling on anonymous for solidarity. It will be in the mutual interest of Occupy Oakland and the city if you respect the building occupation by recognizing Occupy Oakland's residency. We are sure that we all look forward to the needs of Oakland people finally being met. Sincerely, the Occupy Oakland Movement. And that was a statement from John, read by John Mose of the Occupy Oakland Building Movement Assembly. Short version, don't fuck with us or we'll fuck back. <laughs> <laughs>